Hello folks, how you doing? Right, today we're going to be messing around with the weedless rigs again. Now, I released the mono rig, as you know, and that typically uses a tube to lock that back Texas hook or worm hook. Uh, if you lock it, um, it creates better hookups, I have found personally. And I've tested this for 18 months, so I know that is the case. Um, if you tie directly on the shank uh, without fixing it, now that hook drops and you lose your ability to hook up as many fish. So what I've done in this video is, is I'm going to show you how to lock the shank and the hook together to enable you to tie on the shank and part of the, 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 uh, the hook as well, as well. All right. So there's, um, it just gives you some more flexibility if you're not into tying on tubes like I am. Um, it doesn't give you the versatility of tubes, um, but it does allow you to tie just using the hook and the shank. But the key thing is to make sure that this shank stays fixed. Now, the best way is to use titanium. Now, I use 65 pound and it's worked great. So if I flick that, it always comes back. So that means when I'm fishing it, that hook point is always higher. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we're just going to show you in this video how to tie this rig up. And we're also going to show you just an example of what you can tie on it. Now, this is a, a lot of people have been asking me how to tie a 3D fly. Now, this isn't a 3D fly. It's a hybrid of a, a 3D, a bulkhead and a hollow. So, but it's, you know, I've just freestyle one day and that's what I came up with and it you know it, it's a fly that swims well it swims hook up um, you could tie a bulkhead on it like this so it's up to you but really the video isn't about what I'm tying it's about the rig itself okay so you you want to choose you want to choose a hook that's got a point higher now on, in the video I bend the A-Rex again I like the A-Rex because the wire isn't too thick and too heavy um, and it bends without breaking too many. You can use the decoy worm 18, which are these bad boys. Now they've already got a point that's higher. Now you can get these from big streamers. I know Dennis has got them in stock. Uh, they're not cheap. They're a, a, a you know a gear hook really for, for rubbers, um, but they're also a very good fly tying hook as well. Um, so at the moment on the market, you'll struggle to find anything with a long shank like this and the hook point higher than the eye. All right. So, but that is likely to change. I can't say much at the moment, but yeah, give it a go. So let's get time. Um, so attach that hook. I've got a probably about it's a homemade shank, so it's about 30 millimeters. Uh, you can use. Um, spawn fly fish shanks or flyman shanks for this uh, but I prefer the the eye to be a bit more stronger and thicker wire so I, I tend to make my own and, and wrap over the, uh, the tag ends of the wire to make sure they're secure so I've already put some thread down I'm using 100 GSP uh, 150 is fine you need a strong thread really um, you can use other threads non GSP threads but just be mindful that some threads are a little bit more bulky and you, you, you'll bulk up the shank pretty quickly. Um, so I've put the thread wraps down. So next what we need to do, we need to stop this hook from dropping. Um, you, as you can see with this one here, uh, it's fixed with titanium and it gives it the spring it needs and it doesn't drop. Obviously as that hook drops, you know, you, you lose that exposed point. So you need to make sure that those uh, the shank is fixed and it's quite a difficult thing to do I've played around with different materials I've tried mono but titanium is is the best and you need quite a heavy titanium for this so we're going to use, be using 65 pounds so we're just going to measure up what we need now we want probably about 10 centimeters of this so I'm just going to cut that now just use your wire cutters don't use your scissors Now, in order to, to slot this, um, to lock this um, 
titanium down, you need to make sure it comes either side of the shank eye um, so it doesn't move. So what I tend to do first is start underneath, bring that thread forward. So I'm just going to put this tag end in underneath. I'm going to tie that down. Come all the way to the eye. And we're going to fold that back. And tie that down as much as we can. It will start bending. There we go. And come all the way to the end of the shank. Now what we need to do now is take a bead, a small bead. I've got a three millimeter bead here. So we need, we need that in to prevent the titanium pulling through. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, we're going to bend this titanium we need it to come past the shank of the Texas hook, but not too far because we don't want it to slip. It's quite a fiddly process this, so just pinch that tight. Titanium needs to come down on the other side of the shank, on the other side of the eye, because that's what stops it from slipping. Tie down. Now follow that. Titanium down with the thread to make sure it's secure. Before you get to the end, just slot the tag in through the eye and tie down. Nice and tight. Fold over. Now we can take that tag end off a bit shorter because it was a bit long. Now you could double over those tag ends onto the hook in a minute. But what you find with that is too stiff. There's not enough flexibility and it doesn't, it tends to stop the, the shank having that free movement to straighten up. So a bit of trial and error here. We just need to take a little bit more off that. And tie that down. Like so. Make sure it's secure. Let it finish. I've lost my scissors. There it is. Cut that off. Now we want to put this hook in the, in the vise like that, and just let that. Let that hang. Put some wax in your thread or some super glue on your hook. It's up to you. And tie onto the, the shank of the hook. There's not much here. And that's one of the reasons why we extend this out. It just gives us a lot more tying space. And bring that titanium back. Make sure the titanium's above the eye and the, the shank is fairly straight. We can, once we've tied down a few times we can play with it a little bit just to straighten it up. Now what you want, you don't, it doesn't matter if it's slightly going upwards but if it's going downwards you sort of lose a little bit of that exposed point so that's about right. Straighten up, tighten up Tie all the way down to the end. Make sure it's secure. Let it finish. There we go. So you can see when I'm flicking that down, it comes straight back up into place. So it keeps it 
prevents that hook from dropping when you're fishing it because you want decent hookups of these hooks you don't want them level you want that hook to be higher there we go so next we're going to tie one of these it's like a cross between a 3d fly bulkhead and a hollow it's very looks a bit like a salt water fly this one um, mostly actually pretty much all natural materials in here so apart from some some flash uh, we're going to take a slightly smaller version of this um, but a similar style so again we're going to use GSP 100 150 is fine as well so we're going to start tying on the hook shank apply a little bit of glue Like that. Now I want fairly long bucktail for this part, so we're gonna we're looking for about four inches. So cut some bucktail off, sort of round about the sort of the tail of the mid section. Take all those right under fur out. Check the ends. Got a nice taper to them that's what you're looking for so we're looking to tie in around that around that area we want to feed this all the way around the hook so a few loose wraps over the top just use your thumb to spread that material all the way around like that Pull down tight and wrap that material down. Remove any stray hairs. And next we're gonna use some yak. Now I don't use a lot of yak, I've only just started using it actually. So look up, um, I think it's Rupert Harvey. He sells them on his website. So um, it's worth having some of this, it's very good. You could substitute it with Steve Farrow blend or Canacolon, same thing. Um, but yeah, I quite like the, the Yak, it's got a nice wave to it. It's a little bit thicker than the synthetics. Um, so you you know, you want something, and I know it doesn't tangle from, the, from talking to the guys. So um, it's worth putting some in your fly if you want to extend that bucktail a bit. So I'm going to do that with this one. You don't need too much of it. So what I've done with this, I've just blended this with a little bit of a polar flash. Um, this stuff, so it's got a nice sort of a brownie, tanny polar flash. This one, but you can use whatever you want. So I'm just going to tie this down 40, 40 at the back, 60 behind, and tie that on top. Fold that back over. You probably noticed I've got some foam on top of that tip because I will hook myself. You learn from experience. There we go. So any stray ones, just just trim out like so. so that's tied down. Whip finish. A dab of glue on it. Use super glue. I've used liquid fusion, as you know, if you've watched these videos before. Right, you don't need to take this out now and attach it to the shank because one, you can't, it's very difficult to do that. But you've got enough stiffness there to actually tie on. So let's wax our thread again. Just get that thread going like so. And again, we're going to choose some longish bucktail here for the first time point, not too much, taking it from the mid. And what I'm going to do, 
first time point is going to be underneath the fly. I probably want a bit more than that. So have a look at your tips. You want a nice taper to them. And I want those tips to come to around about here. I'm just going to take those ends off. Bring that thread forward. And what you can do, you can wrap it right tight to that hook eye. And then it doesn't move to side to side so much. So go as tight as you can. Tie those down. Make sure they're even. Tie those butts down so they're nice and secure. Now we're going to come with some tan bucktail on top. Now for the top of the fly, I tend to choose between the mid and the base. You've got more air in here. So the more air in that bucktail means when it sinks, it's likely to stay hook up because you're creating a nice wing over the top. So just be mindful of your bucktail selection. So we're just going to put some of this over the top here. We're going to come around the sides a little bit with this one. A few loose wraps over the top. And then come down the sides. We want a bit of that tan to show on the flank, but not right underneath, like that. Tie down. Next, we're going to we're going to start doing a, a bulkhead. You don't have to do that. You can tie it hollow, but you know, really, this this video is more about the rig than the actual fly I'm tying. So I'm just going to choose the curliest bucktail I've got. I haven't got much left now, so I'm just going to select some fibres near the base. I don't go too heavy on this. Take all those under fibres out. Now you've probably seen me before, what I tend to do with when I'm doing creating bulkheads, I just pull the fibers out and lay them back on top again. Like this. Check those ends, make sure there's a nice there's some taper in the end. And then you can turn that around and you can see we haven't got any straight edges in there. I'm just gonna turn this over. Before I do that, I'll add a little bit of glue. We want those fibers to come back to about here. So I'm going to start there, hold your shank, You'll lose a few, because there's a few shorter ones in there. That's no problem. Just press your thumb down. There we go. Next, we're going to put some more yak hair, met blended with polar flash. Oh, actually, before we do that, we're going to put some feathers in. I completely forgot about the feathers. Now, feathers are optional. I like to put feathers in on long, skinny, dry fly feathers and flies. So let's start doing that now. So we want it to come to around about here. So the hook is central to the fly. And just maybe slightly past, past the, um, the yak. Now, what I should have done was put the feathers in just above the tan here, but I forgot. <laughs> That's the thing with videos, it's, it doesn't really matter, as long as you time in at some point. And what I like to do with these feathers is just fold them back. So they, they ain't going to come out then. A bit untidy that, but you get the gist. Right, next we're going to put some, some yak over the top. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to come, I'm going to do it 60-40.
tie down. Fold that over. Now what we really should have done was put the yak down first. But we're sort of making this up as we go along to a degree. I tied, I tied these flies a week ago and I've forgotten what I did. So um, you'll have to bear with me. There we go. So we're going to push, use our push tool just to push that but tail back. And then we're going to hollow tie in front of it. Oh, holding that shank so it doesn't move around too much. There we go. So that's that's the angle we're looking for. Once we soak that in water, that will then push back a lot more. I come forward about five millimeters. So next, what we're going to do, we're going to put some more bucktail. I'm, I'm looking for the most crinkly fibers I have. Take the under hair out again. We're just going to feed those Lay those feathers on top, pull them through, laying them top. Take that straight edge away. Get rid of any long ones, put them back in. It's not too much, so we go. Turn it over. Tie that down. We're coming with tan again. And we're going to do the same with the tan. We're going to create a bulkhead. Just leaving those butts. Just creates a little bit more volume in the fly. Not so sure we could tie this hollow. You can tie this however you want. Go over the top. Tie down. Use your push tool. Push that back. And create a dam in front. Like that. Come with some more feathers. Got some nice brown ones. They're actually sort of nice tan colour on the opposite side, so we're going to put those in next. Tie those in. Like that, fold them over, tie them, tie them so they're secure and they ain't going to come out. Tie down, have a drop of, add a drop of glue. And we're coming to the end now. What we're going to do next is we're going to add some more yak. Now I've just blended like a, a tan colour with black here, but I'm going to shorten this a little bit and just taper those ends. Just a, a small amount, you don't need much. And this time I'm going to come over 60 at the back, 40 at the front. Tie that down. Fold that over. Well, a little bit more curly buck tail, just a little bit. Take those super long ones out. Make sure those edges are nice and tapered. 
spin over. So we want those tips to follow, follow the others. So let's just tie that down. There we go. We want to push that back. Pull the dam in front. And we're getting close to finishing this fly now. There we go, like that. The last couple of steps, we'll put some more feathers in. We'll put some grizzly feathers. It's like a light, an olivey yellow color. So just put those in over the top. Do the same for the other side. Like I said, feathers are optional. You don't have to put them in, but it does really finish the fly nicely. A drop of glue. And next we're going to come with a little bit of brown bucktail. Again I'm choosing the fibres nearer the base. They tend to be on this tail but in particular they're slightly longer. I'm just going to tie these in hollow. Actually before I do that I'm going to do something else. I always forget to do that. Now we're going to take some peacock wherever I've done with it. Peacock is here somewhere. There we go. Now this is Fly Company Peacock. It's good stuff actually, it's quite long. Um, so I'm just going to take some of that. Good healthy, healthy amount. Just make sure those ends are tapered a little bit. I'm just going to, I'm going to reverse tie it in, let's just make sure they all stay in. So tie it down like that, the scissors, take your bucktail, I've lost half of it, let's cut a little bit more off. Bucktail tight over the top. Come in without cutting the feathers off and take those tags and tag ends off. There's a few stragglers in there, but it doesn't matter. Like that. On the underside, a little bit more bucktail, maybe a bit more than what you did previously. You want to give that head a bit of volume. Again, just pull those fibers through, like so. Take any long ones out, spin it over. Okay, pinch flat. And use your push tool. Remove those white ones. Just push back. Put your thread forward and then build a dam.
And you've got plenty of hook eye here to play with. So you can build a fairly large dam head. But don't go too big because they do look a bit unsightly, those big thread dam heads. There we go, perfect. Just a bit finish. There we go. So it looks a bit wild at the moment, but once that's had a bit of a soak in water, it will look fine, trust me. So then lastly, what we need to do is add some eyes. Now we have a couple of options here. We can go for those nice Pro Sport Fisher Generation 3 Jungle Cock sub eyes. These flies, uh, these eyes particularly suit this fly. Um, I'm just going to go for some tape eyes. These are 8mm. Just standard silver tape eyes. So I'm just going to glue those on quickly to finish the fly off. I put my glue down and I can't find it anywhere. Where's it gone? There it is. Right, what I tend to like to do with these, I, I apply the glue to the back of the eye. Make sure it's spread all the way around because we don't want to squish them down onto the, the head. We want to keep that head shape. So I'm just going to put that on. I like my eye quite close to the eye of the shank. Some people like it further back. It's really up to you. There we go. So once that's dried off, give it give it a coating of UV of your choice. This is Deer Creek Fine Flex, just to protect those eyes. Um, I usually add a little bit of marker pen on the the head as well, just to just to um, colour that thread in the brown marker. I haven't got one now, but I'll. Sh do that before you put the UV down, or you could put it after and then go over it again. So there we go. So once that's dried off, it will look a bit, look a bit like this. This is a slightly bigger one. You know, it's got that nice bait fish profile. Okay, you know, I tie these, I fish these for pike, but you know, this is really a saltwater fly. Um, make it time as a bulkhead, like I've done here. So you've got, you know, plenty of the material isn't impeding at all the hook. So you just got to be mindful of how much material you put in the back and what type of material it is. You don't want anything that snags too much. Bucktail is always a good material, and other natural materials that don't tend to snag. Synthetic synthetics will foul um, if you use too much of it, especially. So just be mindful of that. There we go. Thanks for watching. See you later.